Good almost afternoon, Facebook community. Christopher Ricker here, New York City Parks Environmental Educator in the Greenbelt. And I want to welcome you all to another Greenbelt at Home virtual program. Today we are going to be joining Christopher Rommel, another one of our environmental educators, for his uh, seasonal wonders program. We're up here just above the Blue Trail in Bloodroot Valley and I was panning around before so I'm just going to pan as we're waiting for folks to join us for this program and let you know we're up in this wonderful Serpentine Barrens habitat which is becoming a lot rarer on Staten Island because of ecological succession. So you can see a lot of these smaller saplings and trees are kind of filling up what should normally be a barren environment but good news because there are some native milkweeds and other plants still holding on within this serpentine barrens habitat so again welcome to our virtual program we are walking down the trail and i think i see our program guide, Christopher Rommel. Hi there, Chris. Hey, Chris, how are you today? I'm great. It's great to be outside right now. It's a beautiful spring day. Welcome to everyone that joined our stream for the Seasonal Wonders Tour. Once again, my name is Chris Rommel. I'll be your tour guide here today. And if you recognize this spot, um, there was a hike here last time with Chris Ricker and Angela, actually. They were here and they went on the blue trail going towards Seaview, towards my right. But this time we're actually going to be heading towards this way, um, towards Moses Mountain. Right now we're on the blue trail and we're going to go in between uh, the yellow. Uh, we're going to be go between the blue and the yellow. This is the data trail on the uh, on the map, um, so it doesn't have a specific color to it. But today I'm going to be talking about the transition into spring. So March is a really curious month because the beginning of Mar March, just a few weeks ago, we had a lot of snow, it was freezing, it was cold, I was wearing heavy jackets, it was, it was awful out. But now, a few weeks later, birds are singing, it, I could take my sweater if I really wanted to, it's a sunny day outside, it's gonna be 70 degrees tomorrow, what a change. Um, so we did just pass into spring a few days ago, but it's, uh, not everything's in bloom as you can see, uh, it still looks sort of like winter, um, but I want to show you signs of early spring that happens in, in late March. And we're going to be using our senses of sight, hearing, smell, and touch to see what we can find uh, about early spring. And I'd like to start us over here with this green vine right here, uh, Greenbrier. So as you can see, if you really want to try to see it, there's a lot of thorns on this and to the touch it can be very sharp so i wouldn't suggest holding it too tight but this is a a uh, uh, a curious plant because um it has it has a, a a great use for animals here so in the early spring you have a lot of animals coming out to go uh, search for food for berries for insects and you might have bigger predators in the sky like hawks and these little critters and birds need somewhere to hide. This is where the greenbrier comes into, into, uh, into effect. So the little animals can run underneath or hide inside the greenbrier. And the bigger predators have trouble. They get stung by, by the little pricks on the, on the greenbrier and they'll be completely safe. I can't go too far in. That'd be a bad time. It does attach itself to bigger, uh, to bigger trees like this. It does um, need bigger trees to kind of capture the sunlight. Um, but it does have its value, so it's not in, uh, it's not totally uh, a bad, a bad thing. All right, starting our way down the dotted trail. I'm going to mention this very briefly, briefly, but if you see the rocks on the ground, uh, spring is a very colorful season, and as you can see, the colorful rocks here are green. I talked about uh, about serpentinite in a couple videos before about geology. This is the bedrock of Staten Island and it's green because of the magnesium in it and uh you can only you can find like i said before you can only find this rock in places like africa 
So it's a really cool fun fact about Staten Island. Moving on our trail. So what do you think of, uh, what, what do you think of uh, the weather in spring? It's very rainy, very damp. It rains a lot. Uh, April showers bring uh, May flowers, right? So things uh, are uh, insects and worms and all that other, all those other critters hide under the ground where it's warm in the winter because they can't survive in the harsh coldness. So they uh, go, uh, they go deep underground and they sort of hibernate. And once the weather becomes warmer, they come up. But just like last night, they, uh, there was a heavy rain, really heavy rain. So the ground gets very moist in the springtime and all those air pockets get filled that the insects would need to, to breathe. So in that case, they have to come up and we may see some today. So I have this log over here that I'm going to flip and see what we can find. Um, you got to be careful with those. You don't want to you want to roll any rocks that are too big or um, you can get yourself hurt. And I learned a good tip from Ricker. You want to tip the log away from you just in case anything flies out or it's unsafe. So, for example, I have this log right here. Let's see what we can find. Let's see if we can find some insects. Very slowly roll this. And I see a worm right there. Yeah, so you'll see a few insects, a few worms. I don't see too many worms right now. I saw another bug down there. You might also see eggs. Oh, oh ooh, I see that over there. Oh, nice. That's a good capture. What, I can't see that. What is that exactly you think, Chris? Yep, so this is a female bald-faced hornet. Ooh. And so she has been spending the winter underground in this log. So at the end of the summer season, all of her drones and workers in the hive uh, will die. They'll come to the end of their life and she lives on. So she'll go hibernate for the winter and then in the spring come back and start a new colony building a new hive. That's really cool. I didn't expect to find that right there. So that's a good reason to not tip the log towards yourself just in case. Right. And so she's definitely uh, lethargic because of the cold temperatures. So she won't really fly up and try to get defensive, but these are defensive, um, you know, hornets, which are actually closely, more closely related to yellow jackets than to traditional uh, true hornets. That's a Even though they're thing. called a bald-faced hornet. Nice find, Chris. Oh, wow. <laughs> I guess the, uh, the nature gods are smiling on us today. So just be careful and roll your log back the way you found it. You don't want giants rolling your house and not putting it back the way you, they found it. That was a really cool find. <laughs> what a good start to the video already. All right. So if you, if we walk along, I'm, I'm shouting a little loud so you can hear me through the mask, but you might hear some, uh, some nature like the birds or some water. If you hear anything that I don't notice, definitely type in the comment section, um, what you hear. And we can discuss that and see if we can quiet ourselves to listen more. I can definitely hear some birds in the distance, but we might be a little too far away from that. And I do hear some traffic. Well, so. that's, that's, <laughs> that's definitely not seasonal here. Right? <laughs> or, well, yeah. And so when we think about, you know, sounds within our environment, we're here in the middle of the green belt, but we can still hear, you know, developed human society so we can hear the vehicles that are driving not very far from where we are right now we can kind of see their outlines in the distance but sometimes we have to learn to maybe turn tune out some of those sounds in order to hear what's around us of course good points we are near manor road right near the right near seaview on the boy scout camp so we're not too far but once you once you are, um, if you've been hanging around nature for a long time, like Chris said, we sort of tune it out. And I actually didn't even hear the, the, the traffic until he mentioned it. Let's take a sh another short walk. And like
like I said before, spring is a very colorful, colorful season with all the everything blooming. But as you can see here, it still looks like it's transitioning from winter. As you can see here, we have our beech tree, the only little bit of color that we have here. The, uh, the leaves stay on all year, but a good way to know that spring is coming, you have the buds growing for new leaves on, on the beech tree. They, they do lo lose their leaves, but not for long. You see the cigar shaped buds right here. That's a sign that uh, new life is coming in the green belt. Very beautiful tree, it's one of my favorite. The smooth bark, of course. And uh, in the winter, it's very colorful. You can see from a distance. And I actually just spotted here on the ground, um, one of the first mosses that I learned here, uh, you have the star-shaped mosses. So if you look closely, they have a very pretty looking design on them. Uh, they uh, they kind of look uh, uh, starry-like, but they hold insect, or they, they insects use it as their home. And, it's very ornamental, I think. Very pretty shade of green. And as you can see, it goes all the way on the side of the trail here. Oh, you can, it's a lot thicker over there. Remember the Rolling Stone gathers no moss. We try to keep moving here to gather no moss here <laughs> on ourselves. It's a good lesson we can take in our lives. Especially during the pandemic, we could be a lot very stagnant. We gotta keep ourselves moving forward just like springtime, rebirth. So we come to our um, we come to our stream here. Um, we'll get closer later, but as you can see. The stream here is strong. It's it's moving, and during the uh, there's a difference of the stream in the fall. If you've ever seen it, what happens during the fall? Well, all the leaves come down. It rains a little less, and it blocks up the stream just a bit. So it's very stagnant. It just sits there. In the springtime, like I said, there's a lot of rain. The melting snow from the winter before, it all melts, and the water just comes down the river, washing away the old year. So. Um, as you can see, there's still a bit of leaves on the ground, but we just push right by that, and then we ha and when we um, and then we uh, move into our new year. Listening to water is very is very uh, therapeutic thing, but I think we can find a better spot, don't you? Let's head on down the trail here. So if you pan around the trail, uh, around the trail here, you'll see there's a lot of uh, kind of yellowish uh, plants. It's kind of, they kind of look dead, right? Um, well, like I said, we're transitioning from winter. So in the winter, just like leaves on a tree that come down, the plants preserve their energy. So if it snows, there's less sunlight, it's really cold, they look like this but it's not gonna be this way forever. This is actually still grass. And in a few weeks time, it'll start getting green again, and then it'll get taller, and then it will look like a, uh, um, it'll look very pretty. Oh, as you can see those over there, those are pretty. We got some color already, some nice yellow over there. But the still grass comes with a, um, with a warning, so, we have ticks here on Staten Island. So ticks come from Lyme, Connecticut, and that's where the name Lyme disease comes from. So there's these very tiny, tiny insects that can crawl on you and they're waiting, and they're waiting for someone to, to come, come around and, and uh, attach themselves to. And you have to be very careful. That's why if you have a dog in the park, you have to keep them on a leash so they don't go off the trail and uh, you wanna keep them safe. So you see here, it's even more open land. That's why I like spring and winter time because you can see more of the landscape, especially when it's snowing out, there, it, the, the land is uh, carpeted in snow and you can really see the, the layout of the land. Not like in the summertime where everything's blush and green. Um, there's some beauty to uh, early springtime before all the color comes in. 
Have you guys ever hiked this trail before? Do you, is there anything that you like on this particular trail? I hope to hear from some of you guys. I love this trail, especially for a selfish reason that I'll tell you about later, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I love the aesthetics here. Kind of looks eerily sort of creepy like out of a scary story, but it's, it's cool to be in real life. So for those of you who are just joining us, welcome to our Greenbelt at Home virtual program, Seasonal Wonders with Christopher Rommel. Hi That's there. him. Hi there. I hope if you just came, you see the whole thing. Go back to the beginning. And then so uh, we have our first pink here, our first pink color here. So this is starting to bloom. I believe this is called multifloral rose and it's very thorny. You don't want to touch that. And um, it's, uh, it's very pleasant to look at um, for the eyes. And it is invasive, but just because it's invasive doesn't mean it doesn't add some, some value to, to the land here. I also forgot to show us one more one more uh, plant here. This is a plant that's been used since the Native Americans were here, the one the Lenape were here on Staten Island. And you might already know what I'm talking about, but we have here, it's called our spice bush. So it doesn't look like a bush, it kind of looks like a small sapling, but you can identify it by, it looks like the acne on the, on the, the trunk here. And then um, on, uh, you, you can see the buds on the branches here starting to grow in and the Native Americans actually used this for spices back in the day for their food. And in a few weeks you'll actually be able to use your sense of smell and get a good, uh, get a good whiff of that and it smells really good. I can't, you gotta just want to see for yourself. Um, it doesn't smell, it doesn't smell right now but trust me in a couple weeks it'll definitely come in. It doesn't usually grow a little uh, taller than this but it's uh, one of the most common plants you'll see here. And on the tree here you see some more color. So this is a type of jelly, um, a jelly fungi. Uh, fungi can come in a variety of different colors and this is food for different animals in the green belt here. And while I'm talking about that, I like to mention that this is a forever wild area, which means that um, we don't want anyone collecting any items like fungi or plants here for food, we can go to a supermarket. Animals don't know how to use money, so we'd like to leave the, uh, the, the, the plant life here for the animals. This is a migratory area for birds going south or north, and uh, it'd be really hard for them to gather food if we just took it all. So I hope my cameraman's ready for, for a trek here. One, one thing about the, uh, the wet weather is that we get really uh, wet, uh, wet trails. So definitely bring your boots on a spring day. <laughs> and then you see the water flowing downwards, just like the stream. So maybe don't come here on a, uh, or um, like I said, wear high boots and be prepared after a rainy day. If you've ever seen the beginning of our videos, you might hear the, uh, the footsteps, the crunching footsteps on a trail. You're not going to hear it here. It's all going to be squish, squish. No crunching here. And I saw some deer here this morning. I can't find one right now, but maybe it's because I'm speaking so loud. You want to remain quiet when you're looking for wildlife. So, if you notice this bridge over here, I like to toot my own horn. This was actually a bridge that I built for my Eagle Scout project uh, 10 years ago. So, uh, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad it's still here, 10 years to the day. And it's looking a little greener than it was 10 years ago, but it's at a beautiful spot. We have the stream going underneath, um, beautiful plant life around. And I'll leave you guys for a moment to the sounds 
of our stream. Isn't that beautiful stuff? It's really nice just to take a minute, just take it all in. Um, it definitely helps to, uh, it, it therapeutically helps listening to the sound of a stream going. And as you can hear, it's very strong right now, so it's a great time to come by. This stream will go into Egbertville Ravine, down by uh, Meisner and Rockland. And if you can't make the trip up the trail, definitely Watch that water as it flows. It has a very healing nature about it. So we'll be continuing just a little longer. Thank you for sticking with us. I'm really glad for anyone that joined us. We won't take too much more of your time, but I hope that you're enjoying your time so far. I love this part of the trail ahead of us. It's kind of like a hallway of nature. There's like all the green briar and branches around there. And it's kind of very cool to go through. Like I said, it's like a hall, like a natural hallway. You might see some birds hiding in there trying to find insects or trying to hide. It's a very great area to see. They're not here right now because I'm shouting basically. Um, well, wherever you might see the green briar, you'll see some birds. And this hallway is clear thanks to the stewardship uh, that helps the green boat stay beautiful and, and, uh, and uh, uh, people can visit. And we're actually going to do some stewardship projects this summer. So I definitely advise you to check that out if you wanted to, uh, if you needed some activities to do during this summer. We always accept whoever wants to come by. The parks are for everybody. It's a very green area. I love this. I'm trying to see if there's any birds. I definitely hear them, I just can't see them. We have some woodpeckers coming out. 
We had uh, chickadees coming out. We always have robins around. Those are the ones with the orange on their bellies. And look at this beautiful color here, all this moss. You never thought there was different shades of green like this, didn't you? So as we come on to the last part of our, our trek, uh, we are right near the base of Moses Mountain, just ahead of us. And um, speaking of spring and rebirth, uh, if you didn't know the history of it, uh, Robert Moses was going to build a highway through the Greenbelt here, and he started collecting rubble to build his highway and place it here. And a lot of people didn't think that anything would grow. It would just be a big rock heap forever. And to the surprise of a lot of people, life finds a way. And there's actually a lot of plant life that's growing on Mount Moses right now. And uh, it's a very beautiful place to go and visit and see and see the, the views. Um, you can find hawks hunting there. Um, what kind of plant life did you say there was on there, Rick, uh, Chris Fricker? There was a uh, pear. Uh, prickly pear. Prickly pear, exactly, yes. And other plant life. But it's just a perfect example of rebirth and springtime and becoming new and I, I think we can all take a lesson from that just because um, if you don't see it now there can always be something new and as you can see here on the trail there's more water coming down that creates more of that squish squish it's always nice to be running water not stagnant just like we should be in our lives. And to close out our seasonal wonders hike, I'd like to take a break at one of my favorite spots on the green belt. We have a lot of rocks to choose from, a lot of rocks to take my lunch on. Um, so I'd like to thank you all again for joining us on our Seasonal Wonders hike. It's very early spring. It might not look very cold for right now, but you can always find beauty wherever you look. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely take a hike here. Once again, we just hiked the dotted trail between the blue and the yellow trail. Right now we're on the yellow trail at the bases of Mount Moses. I had a wonderful time today. I had a lot of fun doing this. And if you'd, uh, if you'd be so kind as to view our virtual videos on YouTube at the Staten Island Greenbelt, uh, find us on our website at statenonggreenbelt.org. And you're on, the, you're on the Facebook page already. Always look for more videos on our Facebook page. Appreciate everyone joining us today. And happy spring, guys. Have a good day.